Now on to yet another video about a Bay Area transit system. I've already covered two of the five systems here exclusively serving the region, and now we're on to our third. I've already covered the VTA light rail and Caltrain, and I guess all that's left are Muni Metro and BART. Like its more popular brother, Caltrain, SMART also serves a one-line corridor between Larkspur and Marin County and the Sonoma County Airport, just north of Santa Rosa in Sonoma County. These 45 miles of standard gauge track currently snake through the beautiful North Bay across 12 stations. Like with all my videos, I'll be riding on every single one of SMART stops, and because my channel focuses on TOD, or transit-oriented development, I'll assess every single one of them for how the community around the station embraces their existence. So, in order to tell the whole story of SMART, we have to wind down all the way to the Civil War era in 1864. So back then, the Bay Area kind of outside of San Francisco used to really just be backwater country. I mean, the first ever railroad during this time was just a two-mile Petaluma and Haystack railroad powered by mules. It wasn't until the 1870s that the age of rail would spread from SF to its much less rural counterparts up north. So back in 1876, the Sonoma Valley Prismoidal Railway, and I, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that correctly, was the first rail line that was actually a monorail. It didn't work that well, and it kinda just didn't work. In 1877 though, just a year later after the weird monorail experiment, tracks were placed all over Sonoma Valley and Marin County, from Petaluma to Cloverdale, all the way to the Russian River, which is actually way more extensive than any current rail line. Yeah, it's, it's really sad to hear that. In 1882, at its peak, tracks used to go deep into wine country. The Glen Ellen Station opened up during this time, and this was a very touristy spot for residents of San Francisco to just kind of drink wine and vibe. Of course, on the western side, kind of closer to the current right-of-way, there existed the Santa Rosa and Carquinez Railroad, which ran parallel to its northwestern Pacific rival. Remember, rail companies at this time were exclusively private, and there was legit competition. And that's why you saw a lot of sprawling railways. Santa Rosa is actually more suburban and less dense now than it was back in this time period. Hell, there was even an electric interurban between Santa Rosa and Petaluma at this time. An electric interurban. Uh, spoiler alert, SMART is not electric. The only electric railway that the Bay Area is seeing would be Caltrain, I believe, starting next year. But alas, you know what's coming, the end of rail. In 1928 and 1929, the two railroads would go out of business with the exception of Northwestern doing some excursion and touristy trains. In the 1940s, this would be the just calamitous end. Steel tracks would be physically ripped up for World War II scrap metal, and the era of rail in Sonoma Valley would end for another 70 years. So in 2006, you kind of start to see the path move forward for SMART. Powered with the newly acquired monies provided by this Measure R in this year, Sonoma and Marin counties were ready in 2012 to receive massive bonds north of $200 million for initial investment. However, recognizing that the right of way was over 100 years old, they still needed to do a lot of work. There was a massive effort to renovate a bunch of tunnels, for example, like the Cal Park Hill Tunnel, complete with a parallel pedestrian path. After several delays, having originally planned to have opened in 2014 and $944 million later, the system opened up to complete fare service in August of 2017. The line furthermore extended itself to the Larkspur Ferry Terminal in December of 2019. Now, there was a bunch of fuss over funding and expansion up to the cities of Windsor and Healdsburg, including a lawsuit and a severe lack of funding, but SMART now has the funding necessary to at least go into Windsor, and of course we'll talk about that in a future section. Listen, I think it's super important to tell you what I, and thousands of other people bored, when they become a patron of SMART. So we'll talk about this later, but the headways are actually not that frequent, being much worse than their other commuter rail counterpart, Caltrain. So as a result of this though, they can afford to have a fleet of very, very nice trains. I mean, it feels like I'm taking a train between two Swiss resorts. I guess that's what taxpayer money in the two wealthiest Bay Area counties kind of get you. So, I mean, shout out to wine country. <laughs> For train sets, how about we get you a Nippon Sharyo diesel multiple unit? These DMUs can carry 160 passengers and even more cyclists if some seats are kind of pulled up. Walking in, not only do you feel like royalty, but you are also taken care of if you come in with a bicycle. There are bike racks on the side, as well as vertical bike hooks and wheel support, which is pretty sweet. Honestly, it seems as though SMART is the best Bay Area transit agency for bikes, in my opinion. 
Hell, you even have a pathway for bikes right next to the trackage. The ride is smooth with great suspension, comfortable with these seats, though it's not really that fast, it only averages about 30 miles an hour. There are numerous pockets of track, like between Novato and Petaluma, where it'll be coasting at a solid 80 miles an hour. And the reason why the ride is so smooth was because the entire right of way was rebuilt. And as a result, the new trackage is continuously welded. Like I said earlier, there's one corridor and therefore we're only working with one line and one spur here. I'll actually start from the Northern Terminus first and then make my way down south closer to Larkspur. So for now, this is the Northern Terminus of the system until at least the Windsor station is built. This station actually wasn't part of the original plan, but Smart threw about $30 million into this extension, I guess for people that kind of live slightly north of Santa Rosa and want access to the airport, which is a small to mid-sized airport at best. I respect that the parking lot isn't that big, which is fantastic for the environment in general. There's absolutely nothing to do within walking distance to the station. I did check and there is a bus line from Sonoma County Transit that runs once every two hours from the airport. Dude, at that rate, why even have a station for a very modern train system when there's little public transit connections in area to build TODs in the first place? When I went to tour the station, I was on a bike and I still felt small and insignificant compared to the large airport boulevard. Thankfully, a couple minutes cycling. There was this parking lot with a Starbucks and a Chevron in the middle. Also, in terms of the progress of laying down tracks north to Windsor and Cloverdale, I mean, just take a look. It doesn't even look like they've started construction yet, at least in this segment. Now, onto Santa Rosa North. Smart actually did a great job placing the station here in an area jam-packed with medium density apartments. First off, you have a supermarket right in the station's backyard, and the parallel Smart Trail offers a car-free connection to apartments as south as Jennings Avenue. I, I really love apartments that are the missing link between those five plus one, I call it neighborhood gentrifiers, and then the, just those boring ass single family homes that comprise like 90% of all houses in the US. The Cottingtown Mall apartments and the Park Station apartments are pretty dense for a city, an area that I've come to know is pretty NIMBY. So the Santa Rosa Downtown Station isn't directly located in downtown Santa Rosa, but just a little west of it. It's not quite developed here. There's a massive vacant lot that sits adjacent to the station, but to its credit, the city did adopt a downtown station area specific plan to address this very concern. So keep an eye out in the near future for developments. West downtown where the station is located has a small collection of old buildings as retail and restaurant space. So it's not entirely empty. However, you do have the massive 101 highway overpass, a bunch of parking garages for the Santa Rosa Plaza mall, and then several blocks of car dedicated infrastructure until you're in a pretty quaint and cute downtown that actually has a bunch of stuff to do around there. Wow, I mean, Ronert Park is quite awful and miserable, <laughs> but that's only for now. There is a brand new Station Avenue Central project. It's currently in the demolition phase right now, so there's nothing here, but this actually used to be a huge State Farm office complex. The project currently calls for 460 units and 130,000 square feet of retail and an additional 120,000 square feet of office space. So far, I'm glad that a lot of these stations I've surveyed have active plans past the environmental review for TOD, and it seems like a lot of them are currently being put in place. Outside of this future development, the Crossbrook apartments are sort of close to the parking lot of the station, but you still have to walk a bit to the platform, so it's not ideal. The Kotati station does have some apartments in its vicinity, you got the Santero Way apartments that are down the street, and there exists some decent compact housing north of the station as well. On the blueprint, of course, are more apartments in Santero Way. Here's an additional 98 units, complete with some commercial space and a park. So I'd like to nominate the Petaluma Downtown Station as the clickbaitiest train station name I think I've ever come across. The actual Petaluma Downtown is across the Petaluma River, over numerous blocks. You gotta walk a little bit to get to the real attraction, but nonetheless, I mean, Central Petaluma is pretty cool and walkable. I'm not a fan of all the surface parking by the station, especially by the prime waterfront real estate that could just house a numerous amount of housing units. Thankfully, there are developments in place. Uh, there'll be a new spot on Copeland Street adjacent to the platform called the Heinz Downtown Station Development, 
and it's gonna be massive with 102 units and about 5,000 feet of retail space. Dude, what is up with Novato San Marin? So there's kind of a weird history behind this very whack platform. Um, this acted as the only station in Novato before the one in downtown opened up in 2019. So for two years, Novato residents had to trek to this decrepit parking lot to use rail transport. The location of Novato San Marin station was actually pushed by the Fireman's Fund Insurance Company, which rented out this huge office building that you see right here. Uh, the only problem though is that it's empty and no one uses it now. I mean, there's no direct connection to the station. You'd have to walk on San Marin Boulevard for a bit to eventually reach this stupidly designed corporate soulless moat. But yeah, on my travels up and down this corridor, I saw maybe one or two people get off here. And I can almost guarantee you that they parked in the park and ride lot and they did not walk to the station from their point of interest. Now, the downtown Novato station is more appropriately named than the one in Petaluma. This station wasn't remodeled in time for the system's opening in 2017, like I said, and it opened up two years later. I wanna say this right now, Smart did a fantastic job with most aspects of this station. Downtown Novato, especially on Grant Avenue, caters so much to the pedestrian in Marin and Sonoma County. Outside of that downtown core, you have great mixed use developments like the Millworks Apartments. And to my untapped followers out there, there's plans put in place for the San Francisco Beer Company to occupy the old Northwestern Pacific Station Depot and turn it into a beer garden. And I'm gonna be quite honest, I'm gonna frequent that quite often when it's open. This might be the best place station on the entire system besides maybe San Rafael, and we'll get to that in a bit. Surprisingly, the small city of Novato has three stations, whereas the bigger city of Petaluma only has one though soon to be two. One of the things that immediately juts out to me in the station is the massive parking lot here. I can tell that this station was made as a park and ride for the pretty suburban area of Hamilton. I'm not really a fan of the station's placement either. If they had positioned the platform like a thousand feet northward, it would be in a pretty easy stroll to the Ascend Apartments and the Novato Village Senior Homes. But that doesn't mean that the site will be left in the mud. There are plans for the C Street Village, which is a housing co-op that will occupy the currently empty lot between Main Gate Road and State Access Road, which is honestly super cool. In the future, the station won't just be a park and ride lot in the middle of a suburb, but it will serve as a transit hub for thousands of people living in its vicinity. Oh, great. Another park and ride station at Marin Civic Center. Cool. This time though, I don't really see any concrete plans put in place for substantial infill development. And I know it's not uncommon to build a station specifically for certain places of interest. In this case, the offices for Marin County. I mean, San Jose does have the Civic Center VTA light rail station, but still it's just so empty. Surprisingly, during my travels though, a lot of people did utilize this station and most likely it was just people that lived in the surrounding area and maybe drove a little bit. There are absolutely no connections to any mixed use developments here at all not even to the sprawling single family housing developments right by the tracks, so they really missed their shot here. All right, well, San Rafael Station is the ideal smart station. Out of the downtown place smart stations, this is the most practical by far. You get off right in downtown San Rafael, and unlike the so-called downtown Petaluma Station, in just a block or two, you're right in the heart of the action. I mean, in between brew pubs, record stores, coffee shops, ice cream parlors, and so much more, Accessing this massive yet dense downtown is something that you should take time out of your day to do if you plan on riding smart. I also love how the station is intermodal too. It serves as Marin County's premier transfer point between different transit agencies like the Sonoma County Transit Agency, Marin Transit, and Golden Gate Transit into San Francisco. And yes, I know that San Rafael isn't perfect. There's still a substantial amount of surface parking and parking garages in the back of these buildings. But the more west you go off the station, the more dense it gets, which is nice. And finally, we've reached the southern end of the smart right of way here at Larkspur. This station is known as being the official transfer station for passengers coming in for the Larkspur Ferry Terminal, which is about a third of a mile away on foot. I mean, it is kind of far for the average commuter if I'm being completely honest. There's no feasible way that the station would have wound up being closer to the Larkspur Ferry Terminal. Now, if I was the supreme leader of Marin County where my authority was not to be even questioned, I would have ordered that the railway go through Larkspur Landing Circle, which is a shopping center, 
and the platform would have been located just right next to the ferry terminal. Outside of this though, it's an okay transfer and the frequency of the ferries generally line up with the commuter times of Smart with the hours of departure reflecting when the people living in the Sonoma and Marin bedroom communities have to go to work in the city. So on July 5th, 2023, the California Transportation Commission gave a $30 million grant to SMART, which is enough to fund the entire extension to Windsor, but still not enough to fund to its northern neighbor of Healdsburg. This is because the Windsor extension only costs $70 million to build, whereas the Windsor to Healdsburg extension would cost $160 million. So combining these two costs, you have a $200 million price tag just to extend to Healdsburg. Also at Petaluma North, they're planning an infill station, which will be located just under 3,000 feet away from the famous Lagunitas Brewery. That would be really great for attracting passengers to the station, and it would be really great for the brewery to market their closeness to the future station to attract more customers. I mean, come on, positive feedback loop. There are some ramblings of extending the service all the way to Ukiah, which is 52 miles away from the terminus. Honestly, this plan is okay, but I think at a certain point, a commuter rail system can be too long. Let's keep smart in the Bay Area for now and focus on more feasible and economically viable plans. I think that expanding smart eastward to Napa County is infinitely better than doing so to Ukiah. And there's already trackage there built over a century ago to do the job. Okay, so unlike Caltrain, Smart does not have an express service. So a train will always stop at the less populated Nevado San Marin station at the same frequency that stops at more important stations like in downtown Petaluma, San Rafael, or Santa Rosa. Yeah, the frequencies are low, but I don't have a problem with this as much as I do with Caltrain. A Smart basically serves two counties that have a combined population of 746,000 which doesn't even add up to the population of just San Jose. So there's less demand, and it makes sense to dial down the frequencies in my opinion. And they're not that bad. It's basically at least one train per hour from 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays. Weekend frequencies are absolutely terrible though. Just a fair warning, you'll wait like almost two hours on Saturdays and Sundays, so just be careful. This is such a subjective, an admittedly pretentious point I'll make of SMART that has nothing to do with the system itself, but the area. Marin and Sonoma counties are beautiful, and the fact that there is a very modern train system running through amazing marshes, tree-covered hills, and cows is simply breathtaking. I mean, the system is truly a pleasure to board. Now, SMART, if you want to make the most scenic and beautiful public transit system in the United States, I would highly recommend building lines eastward in the Napa County. That would genuinely bring in so much revenue. I mean, think of the drunk wine moms that don't have to drive in between wineries, right? A modern wine train would be a serious economic generator for that county and the North Bay as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna draw a lot of comparisons to Caltrain here, but listen, Smart uses very old rights of way dating back to the 1870s. That means that these cities by the corridor were built around this corridor by default and downtowns line up with station platforms. I also want to point out that the system is never in the median of highways like 101. Granted, I don't like stations such as Marin Civic Center that are underneath highway overpasses, but it's slightly better than having a rail system run in between such a widely used highway. I think a lot of people are noticing how convenient and great Smart is too. The ridership is slowly climbing back up to pre-COVID levels, with average weekday riderships coming out at just under 2,500 people daily. Yeah, and I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but the highest the system had ever been was just over 2,900 daily riders right before the pandemic. Like its much older cousin Caltrain, SMART is a system that uses a pretty linear right-of-way through historical city centers in a peninsula. It's clean, runs fascinatingly on time, and it runs with a real character and community charm. Everyone I've talked to on SMART is proud of their train, and this is the pride of Sonoma and Marin County, linking the North Bay at up to 80 miles an hour. But SMART's so new that the baby system still has some growing pains with regards to emptiness around its stations and finding a true identity. Also, sorry it's been a while since I've uploaded. I just graduated college, and I've been trying to find myself for the past couple of months. But nonetheless, I am churning out some big scripts. Also, shout out to my beautiful patrons on Patreon. Geezer Windbag, Oleg, Jake Brabick, Carlos DeLuca, Fatlander, and Ped Dispenser. 
Again, guys, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much if you've made it this far, and I'll see you next time.